Okay, good evening, Ma'am Krina, and thank you for agreeing to be part of this interview. My main topic for this interview is about theater music amidst the pandemic. So, to start, can you please tell me about yourself and your theatrical or musical background? Hi, Arvin. Thank you for inviting me here. Um, it's actually an interesting topic that you have, and I haven't really talked about and thought about it, even if we've been in the pandemic for more than a year already. <laughs> and... Um, Just to give you a background of myself musically and in theater, going back to my childhood, <laughs> uh, my environment then was my mom got into theater, to music theater with uh, CCP Stanghalang Pilipino. And I think she got into there because my dad was working on a musical, actually three Rizal musicals, Noli, wow. El Fili, and um, Illustrado. Oh. And so um, my mom got some roles there and then... As a child in the 90s, I was able to, you know, run around the backstage of the CCP Little Theater and I was able to, you know, kind of see as a child how it is like in theater during their performances and I think hints of their rehearsals. So from there, um, I think na influenced din yung yung mom ko to sort of enroll me in summer workshops at theater, repertory Philippines for kids and then one summer naman sa Trumpet's Play Shop. And then the music school of Brian Gaibiab, uh, we would always have summer recitals. So uh, my mom would also include me there in the recital. So from there, I think it influenced me to join the drama club when I was in elementary. And then in high school as well. Pero mas narag focus ako sa glee club and um, in choir singing. And I think that was what um, got me to taking up choral conducting in college. But I actually, just in case I didn't get into the College of Music, I also took the test in Ateneo. And out of all the courses, I applied for theater arts. <laughs> so there's <laughs> a um, sort of connection there. Although I, I myself believe that I'm not really an actress, but I'm just fascinated with the theater world. And then until I got to the point na, which I never really imagined that I would be doing is to really get into the theater world. I did take up two theater classes in college. One with Greg Anton Juan when I was a freshman, Theater 10. And then um, and then when But I was a senior... Acting po, no? Yes, acting. acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dahil required sa choral conducting, I took up stage movement under Derek Dexter Santos. And that was where I first met him, who would later on be uh, my director for a lot of theater works that I would be part of in the future. And so that got me connected to direct Alex Cortez with Dula Ang UP in general. So in 2010, probably because of my choral conducting background, they hired me to be the vocal coach of Arturo Uy. So that was my very first um, theatrical stint as a vocal coach in 2010. And then I think on the same year, I was also hired by Spotlight Center for Magsimula Ka. And then 2013, nagsimula na yung mas regular um, work ko with Dula Ang UP, mm. um, being a vocal coach for Ang Nawalang Kapatid. And then my very first sort of professional music work was for Ang um, Huling Lagdani Apolinario Mabini in 2014. Although previously pala, I just remembered sa mga workshops in the music school of Ryan Kelbya, I was told by my parents, oh, you you write musical plays for children's theater. And so in 2008, I started writing plays, musicals for children. And from 2008, I think, until 2012. And then hanggang sa, mas nagkaroon ako ng, ng regular compositional and then arranging work for Dula Ang UP and then later on outside Dula Ang UP as well. I think my, my, my stint with UP actually opened a lot of doors for me in the theater world and even um, exposing me to the dance theater world, which um, I think in this stage of pandemic, medyo marami rin akong, I mean, mas numerous yung um, dance theatrical music work na ginawa ko as compositions oh. and sound design. So, yun. <laughs> uh, what do you like most about it? For many reasons, but I think... I'm very lucky that I am given this job as a composer or a music director and um, kumbaga parang nagkaroon na ako ng family or circle when it comes to music making and theater and I'm really grateful for that. As a composer, I really love the creative and the collaborative process. I learned to enjoy that and the fascination. I'm really fascinated about the discipline and then the energy and the focus that is being shared by everyone in the space, the idea that anything can happen and will affect everything else. Mm -hmm. 
na inevitability that is being poured over the stage. It's very exciting for me, aside from the hands-on and the, the working process. I enjoy seeing and hearing the different reactions of the audiences every single time that I get to you know, watch with them the play. And at the same time, you're feeling that I'm anticipating what I already know will happen. And then I still get entertained seeing what is happening on stage every single time. Kahit napaulit-ulit na siyang pinapakita, pinapanood, at ginagawa. Alam mo na yung direksyon na pupuntahan ng play. But it's still different every single time. And I continue to be in awe of it. Kasi what really got me so amazed further by the theater world is seeing every individual embrace the urgency, the energy, and then the support. All of these flow into the room and all these values and all these whole mindset just affect the whole art making process of everyone. And I'm really grateful to be experiencing that kind of exciting process. But at the same time, nerve-wracking process. Because like I said earlier, anything can happen and will affect everything else. So that feeling that you have to be on your toes. Because once you're on your toes, it can ripple down and affect everything else. What genre of theater do you love performing at the most? Actually, I'm not very keen about a particular genre. Probably if I position myself as a viewer, as long as the details or the totality of the work or the samkums working sinasabi nila of a show, as long as that whole totality of a show amazes me as a whole or for a variety of reasons, I can live with that already. So parang kahit anumang genre siya, as long as malakas yung impact niya sa akin in any kind of manner, I love it na. Okay, so you're my professor in music theory and music literature before. And I also heard, and you mentioned it kanina, na you teach theater-related subjects. So which among subjects do you enjoy teaching the most? Right now, music literature na seminar in musicology, music and culture. I think I sort of enjoy these discussions with students that are based on sociology, a little bit of philosophy, and mixing it up with theory and you know obs- observations and experiences of the everyday popular music popular culture in general i think it's part of our daily human experience and i think it's important for students to see it that way na not to separate themselves as musicians in what the, with what is happening with technology with society with politics and all that is happening At the moment i am kind of more interested in touching into these topics in classes more in terms of performance i have taught voice but i haven't really been been actively teaching especially ngayon online so it's really more of um lectures and giving activities okay so for you po, um what is the definition of theater music theater music for me crucially functions as an element of support and driver which relies on the vision, narrative, and direction of the writer, the director, and or the producer. I think theater music purpose will always vary according to a particular theater work's conceptualization. For me, it's supposed to be integrated with all the other elements that make the theater art form or piece work. For you, po, uh, what is the role of theater music in theater? basically to achieve sending out signals and messages across alongside what is happening on stage in a sonic manner. So music or sound design adds to the entire experience of primarily grasping the intentions of the director or by the entire creative team. So I think that is the participative role of theatrical music. Before the pandemic, what was the scene in theater? In general terms, na lang siguro, I think in the Philippines, Um, there have been different, there have been a variety of theatrical productions that utilize music and sound design. And it has been very much varied. So composers, arrangers, sound designers, sound engineers, and session musicians were hired to take on the task of filling in the necessary sonic landscape hmm. that is required on stage in or, or in a particular theatrical piece. So may it be from traditional Filipino theater pieces to straight plays that made use of sound design to contemporary theater forms, 
to stage musicals or Western musical forms. So, ang dami daming mga genres and mga styles of theatrical forms that music was able to be part of pre-pandemic. So, there was a lot of Um, movement in creativity and productivity. Many fields were hit hard by the pandemic. So is it much harder <laughs> to perform theater music now? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, definitely. I guess it's much more difficult for instrumentalists and session musicians who have been, you know, actively um, working in theater, providing live music. But at the same time, it also depends on what type of theater music one is talking about or one is dealing with. For example, um, ako probably taking on a personal experience, I've worked in theater more of as a composer mm-hmm. and an arranger. My experience was more on individually creating the music. And so I would be working with a with notation software and then I would be working with a DAO. DAO, DAO. <laughs> 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 Logic Pro. Oh, wow. yeah, do. So somehow pre-pandemic, ganun pa rin yung practice na na-maintain ko. Of course, with a different kind of theatrical form that we are um, having now, which is online theater forms. Yeah. I'm not sure though how it's called right now, ako ano yung mga standards right now, but personally, it's still the same for me, but there were a lot of adjustments that I had to do as well para maka-collaborate ng mas maigi with the entire team and the process. Kasi syempre nagbago rin talaga yun with everything online happening. So personally, I think I'm not heavily hit hard compared to those who were playing during live performances. Do you think the strain in the performing arts is a global occurrence or are the local performers having a hard time compared to their international counterparts? Kasi di ba, some countries like China and New Zealand, they're able to hold the live musical events or concerts right now. Well, at the beginning, it's um, fairly the same kind of stress, tension, strain, um, however you call it, for the different performing art groups all over the world, even in sort of more developed countries compared to the Philippines. But I think because of the difficulties that the political and the government and the economic factors that are pulling us behind, na nahihirapan umahon yung performing industry natin, your performing arts world natin. Because I think um, the people that are within the performing arts world that are leading these groups, we are all doing our best to be at par with everyone else all over the world. You know, I, I'm sure you know this na, na ikaw rin personally, you've been, you know, adjusting and learning the the new standard Um, technical and, and skills and abilities that you can as a musician so that you can ride along with what is mm-hmm. with what is new and modern and what would would help you in in your livelihood as a musician within the terms of the pandemic times but again because of the outside forces of the performance world which again include politics economics social factors these are all driving us in slower motion compared to our other neighboring countries. Do you believe that performing theater music can go back the way it was before the pandemic? In essence, yes, because it becomes an option that we can relive and that I think most people in the field are yearning to go back to or yearning to to do again. For sure, um, some practices and skills achieved through the pandemic will be Kumbaga, augmented in presenting different um, genres or different theatrical forms in person. I think what would be challenging for musicians or for anyone in the performing arts after the pandemic would be the attitude. Like how open would one be to, you know, do the same things that they were doing again pre-pandemic if, if they were able to find other means of doing things easier na nahanap nila during the pandemic or better avenues in earning a living. So, um, marami mga attitudes, I think, that would change after the pandemic that would definitely affect how we would practice the old or the pre-pandemic practices. So, it's a, I think it's going to be a challenge of trying to find our way in, in building a new new normal per se so because ngayon we, we kind of have this new parang practices that mm-hmm. that we i think we've adjusted somehow with and so after the pandemic it's going to be a new set of trying to adjust 
and trying to find our way into finding what would be the best practices again for for everyone involved in the performing arts world not only for the performers but also for for the audiences or in the patrons how would they see the relevance of the theater world after all this if we have avenues wherein we can find shows within <laughs> these the four in within our four walls at home so um, marami mga factors that, that would affect one's psyche when it comes to um, going back to theater again. You mentioned that uh, about going back to the theater. So, um, when do you imagine we could hold more performances? In person? Yeah. Yeah, face to face. Face to face. Well, maybe next year if we have reached herd immunity, cell vaccines. I just realized, um, parang. Even if there's uh, a continuous flow, continuous ba? The flow of vaccines na natin recently. Mm, I I'm think so, so sure. yeah. May mga, right. sin, may mga nakikita na po ako na nabavaccine na, uh, sa mga small areas. Sa mga small areas. Yeah, kasi um, I still keep track of the daily tallies ng mga COVID cases para hindi talaga bumaba, bumaba ba <laughs> yeah. pa rin eh. So, we'll see. I, we can't really say kung kailan magiging safe na magkakaroon ulit ng mga live performances but um, best hope would be probably end of next year in time yeah. for December 2022. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Do you think that theater musicians have taken a lot toll than the other entities of theater, such as theater actors, dancers, considering that most theater music have wind instrument and they would have a hard time performing with mask? I think as a whole, uh, musicians... Siguro I'm, I'm thinking of theater musicians as not only doing theater music. Mm. Kumbaga, um, I'm considering theater musicians as um, what they call protean careerists, meaning we sort of look for different ways for livelihood or different means for livelihood. And we sort of have the ability to choose what we want to do and where we want to enter, what performing arts feels that we'd like to to enter what skills that and techniques that we want to to enhance so not only in performance so um my point is i think musicians during this pandemic and even before pandemic even if they were doing music for theater they were also doing other music mm-hmm. and fields they, they've gone into different fields like teaching or producing music for for other types of events so um i think it is the same for the artistic world. And it also helps, I think, for us musicians that we have a strong community, for example, Association of Musica Filipino. Because mm-hmm. with, with these groups, um, with these entities, we find support for musicians and they always find ways to keep the integrity of the profession and the individual up. Ano man yung, yung instrumento na hawak or ano man yung um, line of work na ginagawa nila in the music industry. And so I think we are able to go through this and even pre-pandemic that whatever challenges we are faced with, gagawat gagawat tayo na paraan to keep the music going. So ending it with, I think, uh, wind instrumentalists, I think the patience and the strive to, you know, just keep on performing uh, the parts of uh, theater piece is very much possible for wind musicians, kahit na with masks. Do you think that technology will play a big role in keeping theater music alive? Yes, definitely. And it's a matter of of oneself putting an amount of energy and time in learning the new practices, new skills, new updates in music technology. Because that's the only way that they can thrive. If they want to be part of the group that features new and fresh, let's say, theater music, they have to be on the same direction of what's in or what's modern and what's being used now. Kasama ang technology sa pag-standardize ng mga conventions. And so I think post-pandemic, there will definitely be new standards in terms of musical conventions. So um, we have to be prepared to offer that as musicians if we want to be competitive in a sense and, mm-hmm. and be part of that thriving world of music theater industry. Technology would definitely um, play a big role. And um, right now, I'm not sure ko ano yung direction na napupuntahan na music theater world. But from what I'm seeing, Broadway, West End, 
are opening and then you have the cruises hmm. going on again and you know different um, places where musicians can work again and singers and theater performance can work again so as long as they know their game as long as we know we know how to put ourselves in the theater world knowing the technology very well because it's it's even much faster now so kailangan natin maging mas mabilis sa paghahabol hmm. ako nga personally medyo um i know i'm a little well i'm quite left behind so for example in terms of um mixing and mastering Um, just to get things done. Yes. <laughs> Pinapasa ko muna sa iba kasi I'm still in the process of learning mixing and mastering in in a better way. It's very humbling as well kasi para oh, okay, kailangan kong <laughs> pag-aralan to na mabuti kasi kung hindi, mawawala na ako ng trabaho. Yeah, diba? true. But at the same time, I'm happy that I'm able to help others you can do better in, for example, mixing and mastering. So, when tapos, tapos ka na mag-areglo, pwede ka ikaw na lang mag master. <laughs> Go! And then I just continue this. So, yeah, it's It's you know weighing all these things just to keep things going forward. That's the main thing. Is there any part of you that thinks that technology has lessened the value of theater music? Oh, uh, since the setting is is different and less personal and less intimate, would you consider online performances of theater music somewhat less pure or less important than live performances? Huh. interesting question. Um, of course, the the entire experience is different. So. the the live the in person performance and being there in in the theater hall or in the theater space is so much different from the intimate personal space that you have watching a performance online and um, I think for me as a viewer it's just really important for one to see it differently see both. Um, ways of viewing it differently, rather than comparing it. Na na ah, mas mas maganda yung live. Of course, the live experience is different, but the online video performance also offers a different kind of experience. So maybe as viewers, it's helpful to have that kind of mindset to separate the expectations that we would normally have when we watch something in the theater. Um, it's really going to be a different experience when we watch something at home and in this kind of uh, um, viewing experience. And I think the pandemic has sort of given creators an opportunity to find new ways in making the theatrical experience sort of develop or evolve with the viewer and at the same time for the makers themselves. Um, it gives them an opportunity to, to think of what ifs or to think of other ideas that You wouldn't think of kung hindi nangyari yung pandemic, I guess. So I think that's a healthy way of you know comparing or not really comparing, but um, separating the ideals of the experience that one gets in the live theater experience and in the kind of um, viewing experience that we have now. But of course, in a regular sense or in a daily sense, if we think about theater. historically and how pieces of theater were made for the stage it's really something that you will miss as a performer as a as a viewer that you would want to do how you would do it on stage i think as more and more theaters are doing sort of theater pieces made for the pandemic stage when when these creators are able to nail possibilities in this kind of format that can be easily accepted by the viewers and other makers Or you know can also sprout discussions in the academe or from fans themselves. It keeps the the theater world wheel turning. Mm. So it it keeps it everything alive as long as there's a continued creativity and productivity in in the theater world. A lot of people regard the arts as less vital to life compared to practical fields such as sciences. So do you think theater helps? people in practical ways particularly this pandemic yeah um definitely i think when when used according to how a person or a group of people would want to feel and would want to achieve while listening to or performing or recreating or watching theater music it helps one to be more in touch with one's emotions i think and if one is able to utilize theater music or the theater arts per se um, during the pandemic, 
very very vital yun sa buhay niya and especially now that we were all very much limited to our ways of expressing oneself and i think theater more than ever and the the practices that are honed in theater i think are helpful and vital to one's being in touch with oneself i think music therapy art therapy theater therapy Um, a lot of these helpful and important tools in getting back in shape sort of psychologically and mentally are very, very important nowadays. And I think theater is part of that because it's something that helps one be more human and understand oneself more. There are a lot of skills that one hones in theater na makakatulong sa pag-relate not only with that isa but with other people when you're in touch with theater music actually not only theater music but arts in general mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. arts therapy usually after a pandemic an art renaissance follows so will that be the case in the future will the pandemic experience shape theater music for the better yes i think so <laughs> <laughs> um, i think the the hunger <laughs> the yeah. drive and the the urgency to make more experience for theater make more music if we're talking about music for theater that drive is so high and so you i can imagine your creativity and the experimentation of everyone involved in the arts will just spill over mga mm-hmm. parang nakawala tayo makakawala tayo yeah. and yeah, mga tayo ngayon pa nga lang na parang I think we're as artists somehow we are able to maximize whatever we can in the yeah. in this boxed limitation that we have. What more if we are able to really go out there and yeah. you know do so much more without the limitations? So I think this pandemic has sort of prepared us <laughs> for that kind of filling over of ideas, new ideas after the pandemic. Thank you, ma'am. So that's a very positive outlook. So personally, I look forward ako to your projects, to your future projects. And as your student, I'm pretty sure that you'll be a big part of theater and or theater music scene in the future. So thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Arvin. Very touched. Very to- I'm touched. <laughs> Salamat.